Hey folks, Swag here. Welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings Home. Today we're gonna to be talking about doing the hard version of Shadow Campaign 3.9. If you started on launch day, you've probably already passed this, but if not, if you're around, let's say 35 to 40, this is probably something you're working on at the moment. And so I just wanted to make a little guide um, I made a graphic as well that should show that sort of shows like uh, kill priority for the different waves and what you should be focusing on. And then I have some footage from some guildmates as well. Shout out to Jam and Heels that kind of shows a run where you mess up and you get zero stars, but it's close and a run where you get three stars. But the first thing I want to talk about is probable shadow team composition. I'm going to kind of assume that you are at least running the Isengard 3, um, so that would be Ugluck here in leader because of his leader ability gives you that that healing. Um, running Dunner or Dunhar uh, here as the healer as part of that Isengard 3, and then Mauher here um, as that additional attacker alongside Ugluck. And then I'm also going to probably assume that you're running Ironhide. Um, he's pretty much some... A character that everybody gets puts on their shadow team as soon as they can. He's just so good. His AoE damage is massive. Um, he's somebody you should be bringing up probably on your arena team as well, right? And then that last slot, I think, can be a number of different characters. What I've seen so far is Nuraz, Bolg, if you bought Bolg, or Morja, um, who's another Isengard sort of member. So this is, you probably had, you had to pay for Morza, I think, and Bolg. Nuraz is a pretty good free-to-play option for that fifth slot for the camp Shadow campaign. So I'm going to imagine you're going to see a lot of Nuraz as well. And he's, and he's pretty fantastic. But in this node, you get a sixth character that kind of helps you, and that's the Goblin Tank Grimpa. So his Nuraz's ability to summon the troll kind of gets nerfed in that way, right? Um, so with that, let's bring up the footage here. We'll do the one. We'll do the one um, that fails first, and we'll go through some of the mistakes. And then I have the graphic here as well, and where I think you should which of the characters I think you should go for first. And we'll just kind of go through the footage and talk about what I think is happening and the mistakes you're being made. But if you're just looking for a kill priority sort of graphic, feel free to just pause the video and look at this. I think this is pretty solid. So let's go ahead and play this. This is with um, a team that's got Nuraz in here, right? And these are pretty much all level around level 37, a few lower than 37, and a mix of G4 and G5. I'm recommending that you probably can do it around 37 and 38, and you want to try and have G5 on most of your characters here. I know a lot of people don't upgrade Ugluck right away, it seems, but his blind, being able to land that really depends on your gear level compared to the, you know, uh, the mobs that you're facing. And so the you really want to have your gear level higher, that way it doesn't get resisted. Um, and then Nuraz is going to be squishy, so you, <laughs> you want to get him up too, and then you want to get Ironhide up too because he's such a big damage dealer. So uh, those are kind of some of the priorities, I think. Mauher is probably the one you can keep at the lowest level. I do think you should upgrade uh, uh, Dunner's skills to his healing skill up to maybe three. He's just so good with the Ugluck lead, um, being able to chuck out all of those Banes and basically give your team extra healing as well as those defensives every time he goes so this is the wave one two soldiers and a hunter right i am of the opinion that you should be going for the soldiers first and the reason for that is because the soldiers first attack that they do is a team up attack uh they've got a pretty good attack and so when they attack you to them and another person on the team sometimes it's the other soldier it's it hits really hard. So let's go ahead and watch a little bit of this. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to mute it. I don't think it's... So my guild member is choosing to go for Hunter. I think that's a mistake. Grimpa's going to taunt here. And then... So they got Hunter out in the first go, which is good. But look at that. Just this two times hit from the soldier is nuts. And Grimpa is already down. Luckily, you get that second goblin spawn. But... I think you really have to try and either blind one of the soldiers 
or take one of the soldiers completely out at the first uh, part. That way you don't have to deal with that double, double attack. All right, so we're going to get through this first wave here. Good, saving a few skills before we move on to the next wave, which I always recommend. Um, unless they are about to go again, in which case you should save yourself some of that extra damage. Save yourself from that damage, rather. Okay, I'm pausing. We have this wave, we have two bashers, a soldier, and an armor. Please kill the armor last. It's a good opportunity to set yourself up for the next wave. The armor is really a support character, doesn't hit that hard. And some, one of his skills is just like throwing up a defensive or protection or something like that. If you can just basic attack the armor down before you get to the next wave, you can build yourself up some uh, uh, cooldowns on your skills there. The bashers hit pretty hard. So that's why I've put them at the top of the priority for wave two. Hopefully you can get one of them down. Um, if not, both of them down would be terrific. That'll put you in a really good spot. I don't think that's going to be possible, but definitely try and far, uh, target one of them. Um, my guild member in this run decided to go for the armor first, which uh, I don't recommend. Could have done the AoE attack there too from, Iron, uh, from Ironhide. So, got the armor down all the way. I think they would have been able to get one of these bashers all the way down. But even with... Let's go back for a second. So, this basher, I think, is going to attack Grimpa here, right? And Grimpa has... I know it's hard to see because the game resolution is not great. But I'm pretty sure Grimpa has some defensives up. So, it's going to take some damage here. Or delete the damage. But even then... Even then, went from, yeah, went from green to red. These guys hit hard. So that's why I'm recommending you take out those bashers first. They're, they're pretty big, uh, pretty big single target DPS. That soldier, I think you're going to have to take the double hit from the soldier, um, unfortunately. But I, the, I think the bashers have got to be your first priority here. I would have blinded one of the other bashers there. With Ug Luck, you should always be using that blind. Save yourself just all that damage. And Grimpa's dead. Not looking so great. Again, I would still be... Because you don't have the armor there, ah, it's... it's You don't have a way to, like, get your, school, or your cooldowns back, right? I guess with Grimpa dead, you do get to use the summon from Nuraz, which is good. Um, but you've lost another sort of tank that you can rotate damage between between Ugluck uh, and uh, Ironhide. Nuraz will put stuff on Ironhide, right? That provokes on Ironhide. Okay, we're still doing... I think this is a good idea. Yeah, just getting up, getting up your skill cooldown. Sometimes, sometimes... Uh, let's go back. Last character of this wave, right? Mauher comes up. Sometimes, when I see this, I actually like to do his special one where he gets drunk. Um, just because that'll set me up for doing extra damage next wave. Um, I do this typically if I know, like, if I see the speed bar's pretty low and I know somebody else is going to be able to finish this mob off, then I can set up Mauher to do a bigger attack next time. Especially with this, this team-up attack. That'll hit pretty hard if you've got the, um, the boons that you get from getting drunk. All right. Okay. I think a lot of people feel pretty comfortable being able to get past those first two waves, especially if you're at that level 37 G5 sort of area. The last wave is what gives people so much trouble, right? You've got a soldier, you've got a guardian, and that's that tank in the middle. Feely and Keely, right? The combo. Uh, and Biffer here. Biffer, you you this guy is also pretty uh overwhelming. I think you you really have to pay attention to him. Um this wave will beat your team like hamburger meat. Actually, I don't think that's a phrase, but uh either way, this is I think where people get like really, really hammered. Um I'm just imagining I just had a flash of something in my head where I was visualizing, you know, that scene in Harry Potter, 
Uh, this is a quick aside where Dumbledore is like taking memories out of his head. He's like, Ugh! and he's like putting him in that basin so that Harry can like look at them later. What if instead of memories, it was just like dumbass phrases that he thought of? He like pulls a memory is a phrase out of his head. He's like, Ugh! he puts it in the basin. Harry comes up expecting some sort of clue for the horcruxes or whatnot. And instead it's just like Gandalf being like, ah, Harry will want to hear this one. Beat like hamburger meat. Uh, anyway, that's just what was flashing through my mind while I was recording the video. Let's get back to the subject at hand, which is this last wave here. I think, this is again a personal opinion, I think this worked for me, I think it's very helpful. I think you want to go to for Feely first. Feely is the healer, um, He's and he has massive heals for this team. The thing is, though... If you attack him first, sometimes he doesn't heal himself up. I think it depends, but if you attack somebody else first, he will su he will usually do that heal. And so I think you want to hold off on attacking other people and get Feely down as quick as you can. The reason I have Biffer as the second priority here is because he does a massive AoE slow, and it's on a pretty short cooldown. So he can get it off two, three times during this fight, and it just... It just debilitates your team, right? You're not... It, the whole team being able to slow down is so painful. Plus, the Shadow Campaign team doesn't have a lot of ways to clear those banes. So I think this also has to be your priority. Either ability blocking him and keeping him under control or just outright killing him. The first turn, the Guardian is going to ta uh, taunt. And that can be a big problem. So I also, if you can, try and want to ability block here as well um i know that's a lot to ask but you do have two ability blocks you have one on ugluck is a special two and you have uh oh maybe you you only have one ability block just ugluck on a special two you do have a slow with mauher special two um which is pretty good and so you just want to be able to control feely and keely uh and sorry feely and biffer here and then making sure you can handle the guardian as well so let's see what my guildmate here does. They go for Guardian right away. I think that's because they know that they can't clear the taunt, but then they do an ability block, and then they continue to target them. So I would have probably switched to Feely here, or Biffer, because look what's going to happen now. Feely's first attack. Yeah, that is just nuts. So it... Oh, God. The AoE slow plus a team up is, uh, the team up is actually just the soldier, but the AoE slow is just so killer. Um, and then the dwarf team is just going to run circles around you. Got the guardian out, which is good. And now going for Feely for that heal. And then the infamous dancing in a circle. Look at that. Just all the way back up to green. And I just got to say, first of all, if I saw people doing this, if I saw people doing this thing, dancing, uh, Doing this in real life, I'm pretty sure I would be like, I'm about to be involuntary, involuntarily involved in some cult activity, right? That's I know it's supposed to be like joyous and they're expressing joy, but like, it's creepy. <laughs> I don't like it. It's very weird. Okay, so now we're just focusing down Feely. And I told you this is the one where they fail, right? So, Gunner out. Ugluck's not looking so good here. Got Feely out, though. Uh, yeah, Keely does hit really hard. Um, so that's kind of why I think you should target him third. I, I just... I think Biffer is... Because of the control he has, you just have to get him down. You have to be able to control that. Oh, wow. Just deleted. These are also slow. There's the second slow. These are also uh, a little bit under geared in terms of characters. I think of like one or two more levels here. And then, uh, and I think two of these characters are G4. Ugluck and Mauher, I believe, on this team are G4. And having them at G5 will also help. My sort of anecdotal theory. All right, defeat. My sort of anecdotal theory here is actually that um, for clearing campaign levels. Oh, sorry. For clearing campaign levels, you actually, like, there's some 
level that your characters need to be or that your account needs to be for it to be sort of easier. Whereas like in a arena, uh, you, you need more gear level. So I feel like it's like a actual character level for doing campaign. And I feel like it's more gear level for, and skill level for doing PVP stuff. Um, that's just kind of my anecdotal theory. I've like gotten one level leveled up my characters by that one level, and then just been able to very easily clear another campaign node. So if you're really struggling, maybe you just have to wait a level and do that again. Um, I know people are interested in doing this for this, for finishing that, uh, quest. I don't think you have to three star. I think you just have to finish it. So let's watch, uh, some footage. Let me mute that. Let's watch some footage of a three star. My guildmate here blinds one of the soldiers, immediately targets the other soldier. I think this is a really good idea. Um, puts the expose there. I don't use uh, this guy as much, so I don't know exactly what his abilities do. But now we're just basically focusing. Yep, here we go. There's the soldier. Second soldier down. Even though he's blinded, the second person, I still believe, gets the hit off, but that first person doesn't, and it's just still half the damage. So I think that's a pretty good round one clear. Targeting the bashers first. This is exactly what I would do. Um, that's a resist. Probably just not good enough. This particular team is all G5 and all level 39. So they should be able to totally clear this, no problem. I think you can do it at level 37. Um, first basher down. And there goes the second basher. Targeting the soldier. This is exactly how I would recommend doing it. I'm I'm I think I would have just finished off the soldier there and not have worried about the this guy. Um, because he ended up getting off an attack as well. So maybe a little bit of a mistake. I also would kill off the soldier and then sort of just grind down on the armor, like I previously mentioned, right? Now you get some of your skill cooldowns back and then you set yourself up for a good wave three. Wave three, let's see what they do. They go for Feely first. So we'll see if Feely is going to do his heal. No, it could be he does his heal when he gets in the yellow. Maybe that's what the AI, when the AI triggers it. But getting that expose up is really, really great. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that because I think it comes from this character, whose name I never remember. The Lancer guy. Okay, who does... Who do they go for next? They're stuck behind the taunt. That's nice. That guy can clear taunts. If you can't, you got to just stick with the guardian. Dunner. I call him Dunner. Being able to toss out the weakens, though, when he does the heals is so incredible as well. Um, this He's so good. I, I can't stop talking about him. He's just so good. Big hits from Ironhide. Um, I think this Ironhide's pretty stacked, got level three skills across the board, so very, very good. Again, I probably would have focused Biffer next as opposed to um, Keeley here, but it seems like they had enough sort of leeway to take care of both of them at the same time. Finishing off the Soldier, right? And now finishing on uh, the Guardian here who doesn't really have a lot to do, right? And are they going to get three stars? They should, although Ugluck looks pretty close. And victory. Okay, so that's kind of my guide. This is the kill order I would recommend. If you have any other questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll try and get to them uh, about skill levels or what any of that sort of stuff. And uh, thanks for watching.